Good afternoon, everyone. I know that there are still others joining in and the number is slowly rising of those that are joining. So we're going to give everyone uh, a few minutes to pop in. Um, while we're waiting for people to join, I thought I would quickly come on here and welcome all of you here um, and introduce myself as well as our presenter, Randy, for this afternoon's webinar. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to your Construction Safety Association of Manitoba's 2023 Safety and Health Week virtual webinar series. Safety and Health Week is a continent-wide event spanning the countries of Canada, USA, and Mexico. And the goal of the week is to focus the attention of employers, employees, partners, and the public <clears throat> on the importance of preventing injury and illness in the workplace, at home, and in the community. My name is Megan Story, and I am the Training and Development Manager here at the Construction Safety Association of Manitoba, and we are proud to be recognized as your premier and trusted source for safety and health information, resources, training, and core certification. Today's Safety and Health Week virtual webinar is an example of how we are striving to provide you with practical and relevant information to help with accident prevention in your workplace. For those of you who may not know uh, or may know, CSAM, our motto is quite simply, yes. Our answer is yes. How can we help? We will have the answers to your safety questions or we will find the answer with the help of other qualified resources and partners <coughs> in safety and health. Today, I'm pleased to have introduced Randy Pockrin, uh, who will introduce the risk you or your employees could face when working alone, Manitoba's and other provinces working alone legislation, their impacts on employers in many different industries, and the legal consequences if people are not protected. And finally, the three key areas critical to managing this hazard and highlight what employers can do to reduce risk and meet the regulatory requirements. Please note that we are recording this webinar and that a copy of the presentation that Randy is sharing with us will also be made available. So following today's webinar, everyone that is registered to attend will receive an email with not only the PowerPoint presentation, but also a link to the recording of this webinar. Without further ado, I will pass this off to Randy, who will share his screen and um, introduce the topic for this afternoon. Screen is yours, Randy. Thank you, Megan, and uh, thank you to CSAM. Megan, are you seeing the screen now? Uh, yeah. Presentation? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, welcome, uh, everyone. I'm glad that you're able to join us today on such a beautiful day here in, in Winnipeg or wherever you're coming from. Hopefully, you have some great weather where you are. And uh, thank you again for joining us on this important uh, safety and health week, you know, across Canada. Uh, my name is Randy Polkrant. Uh, I'm with Pertelic, and uh, thank you for attending our presentation today on this important topic of lone worker safety, which, you know, as our presentation title suggests, is really a hazard that many of us will, in fact, experience in our roles. And yet that often employers tend to overlook when it comes to the development of a complete and comprehensive safety management system to, you know, not only ensure that we're meeting those regulatory requirements, but of course, that we're ensuring to keep our, our people safe and protected. So, so I look forward to going through the discussion with you today and uh, going over some material. It'll be, I know we have about an hour scheduled for this. It'll be fairly fast paced to get through all that I hope to cover. Um, we will have a short Q&A period at the end, but please feel free to ask questions or provide your comments along the way as well. And I've shared my contact details here and at the end of the presentation as well. So, you know, certainly look forward to if you have uh, uh, further questions or want to reach out to me afterwards, uh, feel free to. And I look forward to those discussions as well. So let's get started. Um, get on the right screen here. Um, in terms of our learning objectives today, we're going to uh, start, we've kind of broken this up into two parts. So we're going to start by, uh, you know, looking at why is protecting loan workers so important. We'll provide a few examples that you know, hopefully will be relatable to your own roles or your own organization and industries that you're in. Um, 
then we're going to kind of look at the layers of the legislation and regulations and, and you know part of that is those key definitions and then review some key takeaways of what this first part is telling us. And then as we move on into part two, we're going to, you know, we've talked about, you know, the challenges and, and the regulations and the requirements there. And then we're going to look at, you know, what are some best practices in terms of a solution here? And we'll we've kind of divided that in what we, as, as Megan mentioned, three key components that we think are you know, critical to kind of consider when you're looking at a solution. So we'll go through those component details and uh, then we'll end with sort of a final review and some conclusions and then that Q&A period that I, that I spoke about. Um, in terms of just to tell you a little bit about, you know, our company and, and a little bit of, about myself, I'm not going to go through all the details here. We say, you know, we are a Manitoba based uh, privately owned company protecting life and property since 1968. And I, again, there's all, I'll let you read the screen there for some of those uh, specifics, but I'll just highlight two key areas. And number one is that we've always owned and operated our, our own 24 seven emergency monitoring center that's been really operating uninterrupted uh, here in Winnipeg since our company first opened back in uh, 1968. And the second part I'll just mention is that we've always been you know, very much a solution focused uh, organization, which was really never more evident than when one of our clients back in 2003 came to us with a challenge. They were looking to figure out how to protect a lone worker working on a, a midnight shift and our owner at the, uh, being very uh, you know, innovative and always wanting to try to help uh, really thought we can do this in a, in, a, in a better way. So we, what we did was he set out to develop a, a system where we blended technology at the front end to kind of create that consistency and reliability and safety checks blended with our, you know, live operator response from our emergency monitoring center on the back end. Um, we think that's a key part as well, and really came up with a very comprehensive and complete system to really uh, address this challenge and help help companies and organizations out there with this. So um, really, this was really before there was the development of the regulations even, but it certainly has grown over the years now where we're, I think we're supporting maybe 17 or 18 different industry categories that we group our clients into. So really a widely used uh, service across uh, all of uh, really North America. So that's a little bit about how we got into this and uh, how we really created our, our Protelic Checkmate Safety Division. Um, and in terms of myself, uh, just very briefly, I, you know, I actually started working in our company back in the late 1980s in our monitoring center and really went on to spend about 30 years in the construction and manufacturing uh, industry. So maybe similar background to, to some of you. Um, and I won't get into all the details of my career, but uh, like many of you, one of the things I certainly have seen is, you know, the changes, you know, in health and safety regulations and you know, across Canada and certainly the unfortunate consequences of inadequate health and safety, you know, um, some directly, some experiences and, and certainly heard of others, you know, in my career. And, and definitely have seen that, you know, the positive impact having a complete and comprehensive safety management system in place that also addresses lone worker safety and how that can be so positive, you know, not only for your employees, for your management, but of course for your customers as well. So pleased to be here sharing a little bit about uh, what I've learned on this topic, I've, uh, you know, actually I joined our company back in 2019 and really now is fo are focused on, uh, you know, building these partnerships and really providing education around this topic and, and helping out uh, uh, companies and organizations in any way I can on this issue. So that's a little bit about me. So let's get into, you know, why is protecting loan workers uh, so important? We're going to just review a few um, examples that I think will be you know, hopefully relatable to uh, your own, like as I mentioned, to your own organizations. So this first one, it's the weekend and you decide to go into the office early one Saturday morning to get some work done. You think I'll only be there for a short while, so no need to let anyone know where I am. While coming down a flight of stairs, you trip and you have a terrible fall. You're injured, you're unconscious, and you have no way of communicating that assistance is needed. Time is of the essence for the best chance of a positive outcome. But since no one is checking on you, assistance never comes. How could this lack of assistance have been prevented? It's mid-January and one of your clients has asked you to go out and check on a site that is having issues. You decide to leave early one morning and in your haste to get going, you fail to check the forecast. 
A short time into your journey while driving, you're in blowing snow, wind chills in the minus 40s, and you suddenly go off the road. You're slightly injured, but it's, not, it's the cold that worries you the most. When leaving, you did not tell anyone where you were headed, the route you were taking, or even when you would exactly arrive. Timely assistance is needed, but no one will be checking on you anytime soon. How could this have been prevented? You own a retail facility that's open 24 seven. Due to your concern of your staff working directly with the public and the inherent risks, and to ensure you are meeting the regulatory requirements, you implement a lone worker safety monitoring system. One evening, you are contacted by your monitoring center that your employee has failed to respond to a safety check. Fearing your employee may have had a violent encounter with someone from the community, you decide to dispatch emergency services immediately. Soon afterwards, you find out your employee has in fact had a medical emergency due to a diabetic condition. Fortunately, timely assistance was provided and your employee was okay. The next day while chatting with your employee, you're both thankful that you had a system of regular contact in place for your employee. So these are just some you know, examples of lone working or working alone that we thought might be relatable again to you know, situations in your own career or your own uh, organizations. And you know, certainly these are some uh, situations of my career over the years where I was you know, out uh, working alone uh, in what would have been some pretty considerably hazardous conditions. And really at the time, I just didn't really realize just how unsafe this really was. And I had you know, no one checking on me uh, you know, when going to some of these sites. And it was really just by luck that you know, nothing, uh, the worst did not occur. But there really should have been, my employer should have had a system in place uh, to be providing regular safety checks on me. So this is probably something that, uh, it, you know, is very relatable um, to, you know, again, maybe things that you've seen over your careers as well. And I have a slide here that is really just now showing in different examples, again, that uh, you can maybe think of as we uh, consider this uh, in this presentation, this issue. So moving on here, let's uh, move into looking at the different layers of the uh, regulations and the some of those key definitions. Really to understand the regulations and the legislation, you also need to know those key definitions as well. So we'll get into this and work through this. Really the first layer again is that federal legislation, Bill C-45 or the Westray Bill that so many people uh, will know about. And really, you know, I was actually surprised to learn last year that that was really 30 years ago that that you know, tragic incident occurred there in the Westray mine out in Nova Scotia. And I won't get into all the details, but really what came of that is that you know, really at the time, after all the investigation was done, there was no mechanism at place in, at the time to really hold anyone responsible or the organization responsible for that you know, tragic you know, incident, tragic loss of life. So what happened was at the time, you know, 10 years later, the amendment was done to the Criminal Code of Canada, where now it really, you know, two important uh, um, areas are, are looked at here where number one is, you know, employers have a duty to keep people uh, safe while on the job. And failure to do that, really organizations or even individuals can be held, you know, criminally, criminally liable. So this is really a, was an important uh, change to the uh, Criminal Code of Canada at the time. And, you know, the absence of doing this is in fact criminal. So we need to be, uh, you know, employers have a duty to act. So, and, and ensure this is being done. So that's that first layer, that federal legislation, fairly generic. The second layer is really the provincial legislation and the Workplace uh, Safety and Health Acts. You know, every province across uh, Canada has a Workplace Safety and Health Act. Ours was enacted in 1987. A lot of similarities, and this is something I'll mention, you know, across the various provinces, a lot of similarities in, in what it says. And really here, you know, the philosophy that workplace safety and health is shared. Um, employers have the greatest degree of control and they have the, therefore have the greatest degree of responsibility. And, and of course, amendments are always changing, uh, are always occurring as well. So please be aware of amendments that, um, that may take place and, and keep up to date on, on those. 
then embedded in the act are the specific regulations. And uh, today, what we're going to be looking at is two main parts of the regulation. So here, we're going to be looking at, and there's really in Manitoba, 44 different regulations, all very important um, and should be looked at as you develop a comprehensive safety management system and consider risks and hazards that your employees are, are facing. But today we're really going to be looking at the, some of the definitions and then part nine specifically on working alone or in isolation. So again, I, I mentioned that to really understand the requirements of the regulations, you do have to know the definitions. I think one of the first ones here to start with is the definition of a workplace. And I'll just you know, read this out here. You know, a workplace defined in Manitoba means any building, site, workshop, structure, mine, mobile vehicle, or any other premises or location, whether indoors or outdoors, in which one or more workers or self-employed persons are engaged in work or have worked. And again, very similar uh, definitions in other provinces in Canada. But really, you know, what this is telling us, and, and I sometimes go out to and will ask, you know, what, what do you think that this uh, um, tells us? Does anybody want to uh, pipe in here and uh, just uh, provide their comments? Well, I'll, no problem. And certainly what it really tells us is that any place that we are working, uh, whether, you know, uh, and, and nowadays too, in other areas working remotely from uh, remote locations, such as in where I am right now, is that really any place a person is working for an employer is considered a workplace. And we need to consider that as we look at the other parts of regulations as well. Um, now, under the definition of working alone, um, it means really that where the only worker for that employer is at that workplace at any time, or is to not, not directly supervised by the employer or another person designated as a supervisor by the employer at any time. So it's, it's again, very similar to other definitions uh, in the province or in, in the country, I should say. And as we work, move on here and working in isolation, which is an, another part of this to consider, means any circumstance where assistance is not readily available in the event of injury, ill health, or emergency. So, and again, that, that phrase, uh, assistance is not readily available, again, is a very uh, common phrase used in other, uh, other provinces and when they talk about the regulations as well here. So, very important uh, part of it is understanding those definitions as we move into more of the specifics on working alone are on this uh, this part of the uh, of the regulation. So, um, you know, again, commonalities across provinces, really four key requirements that we look at here. And it's number one is identifying those risks. And, you know, of course, we want to try to eliminate risks where we can, but where we can't uh, eliminate the risks, we need to put in systems of control. So identifying those risks, step one. Step two, developing those safe work policies and procedures and providing training for those procedures. And we'll get into a little bit more on that uh, later on in the presentation. Establishing effective forms of communication. Uh, this is a common uh, requirement as well. And things like having a, a radio or phone or cellular or other methods of communicating with a person uh, working alone or in isolation. And the last part is, you know, communication must include, and I've kind of highlighted this, a system of regular contact on appropriate or predetermined intervals and you know related to the risk that the person might be working on with or under so i think that's a key part there is that system of regular contact you know how do we do that in a reliable and and uh, consistent way and that is what we'll get into in a little bit more detail as well another way to look at this too is you know certainly there's all those parts of the regulation that we often will hear about you know uh, um, you know PPE, uh, very common nowadays, you know, fall protection, uh, confined spaces. Really, what about thinking about this topic in a little different way is PPE for loan workers. And, you know, what are we doing uh, to really address this and, and have a, a, a personal protection system for our loan workers? Just another way to consider this. So what is this uh, telling us and kind of takeaways here is really working alone affects us all and it doesn't matter really what industry it is in. At some point in our roles, we are likely 
uh, considered to be working alone or working in isolation, you know, as per those definitions. And so we have to, as employers, ensure that we are uh, taking steps to, to act, to keep people protected and ensure we're being uh, compliant. Uh, the very nature of working alone is a hazard that must be controlled. Um, again, many employees will experience this in their roles. You know, having that ability to have a system of regular contact in place is a key requirement. And again, those regulations that are in place, there's employees or employer responsibilities, employees rights. And another part of it is that we have to have, you know, for compliance reasons, we have to have that proof of due diligence. Um, we know that, you know, if there's ever an incident, uh, workplace safety and health, if they're investigating, I mean, they're going to be asking us, what are, what have we done? Really, we need to have obviously some uh, proof of due diligence, uh, some audit trail of what we're doing. We're really, we know in the eyes of the law that it's not considered we're doing anything unless it's documented. So we need to have that as well. Okay, so moving on, we've kind of reviewed some examples. We've talked about some of those regulations and key requirements there. So next step here is to uh, talk about what's the challenge. And we think, you know, uh, really it's the key part is, is identifying an effective and affordable solution. And we're gonna go into this in a little bit more detail. So we believe that three key components um, in a solution is, you know, of course, having that, talk about that system of regular contact. So an operational system that will you know, ensure the well-being of, of a person working alone, uh, give that uh, person the ability to signal for an emergency uh, if they're ever uh, immediate need of help. Um, so that's the operational system side. We also believe that you know, companies and organizations that implement this system well, like anything, is they're going to have those clear policies and procedures in place. And all of this will help build that corporate culture of safety within the organization. So this next slide, just a, a little uh, diagram here to kind of show this in a little different way, but really you know, those three key components that are all harnessed in those regulations that we reviewed here uh, earlier. So let's go through these, uh, these key requirements here, starting with the you know, the key component is, you know, the, the policies and procedures. And, you know, it's, as we say here, the first step in establishing a working loan solution. I really look at this as, you know, that set of instructions that really, you know, like anything, you know, we're always looking for how to do something. We need clear instructions on what to do. It allows, you know, uh, as we say here, our workforce to uh, resources needed to work safely. It prepares and educates people on what to do, so those specific procedures for response procedures, um, when to use it, it allows uh, our employers, or employees, I should say, to take ownership in their safety, and it starts to build that overall you know, culture of safety within your organization. So um, very important, again, they should be very crystal clear for our staff to follow, um, having a policy purpose statement that defines, you know, your, your policy uh, in more detail, how it's going to benefit you know, all members of the organization, how it ties in with your corporate values and goals, um, you know, and also you know, how, how this policy uh, you know, is defined and, and who it applies to and, and when are they supposed to be uh, using it, the specific procedures within uh, for that, uh, that requirement of, you know, within a person's role and, and how they're going to be, in fact, using the system. And of course, all members need to be up to date. So we need to be constantly providing that, that training. And, uh, and if there's, uh, and as we move on here too, we, you know, be open to feedback. Uh, we want to, you know, we know at times uh, uh, amendments may be occurring and uh, that feedback from employees is, is, is critical. And we know that sometimes uh, we want to know what might not be working, what is working well, and always to address those gaps and make improvements. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's something that we're always trying to do with anything that we do is always try to make those continuous improvements to ensure that, you know, exactly that our policy is, uh, is effective and that it's covering what we want it to be doing. So, so uh, key component number two is we think about is creating that culture of safety. 
again, it starts with creating those uh, very clear policies and procedures in place. Um, we know, you know, if we don't have this, there's, there's of course, all kinds of uh, what it does. It sets up our company, yes, for things like uh, financial penalties and injury and diminished morale, all of those things that we know about. And that's not the type of, uh, you know, uh, organization we want to create. We want, you know, uh, that that culture of safety where, uh, you know, it really, everything we do is underscored in safety. We can start our meetings. You know, I think it's important to have, uh, you know, that safety be a key component at the beginning of every meeting, you know, lead by example. We talk about it, uh, you know, really it has to come from management. We, it's not one of these things where we kind of do as we do as I say and not as I do. So um, let's, and I end off here with, you know, let's, relentlessly have a pursuit of a you know safe workplace for our or within our organizations and we know the positives that that would bring to an organization to the employees and again to the management and to your of course your your customers as well but we also know what the very very unfortunate consequences if we don't do this too so creating that culture of safety having those clear policies and procedures in place are, are certainly uh, very important so we've reviewed those parts of it and keep, you know, the last part is really having that operational system in place. You know, we've looked at the hazards, we've identified the risks. And uh, so now we know the requirements of the employer. So now we want to really look at, well, what is the best you know, operational solution? And, you know, think about maybe what your is going on, you know, I'll maybe ask this at the end as well, but really what your organization is doing uh, to, to address this and, and are there gaps in what's, uh, you know, what systems you might have in place and uh, and ensure that those gaps are are covered. So one of the things we often hear about is, you know, sort of that in-house system that is in, in place. Um, we'll kind of look at both in-house versus we kind of define the other one as sort of a professional type system that could be implemented. So one of the things we, you know, when we think about an in-house, you know, it has to be designed, it has to be complete and comprehensive, and there's a lot that goes into it. Um, Secondly, it relies a lot on, on people to remember to do this, to check in on, on each other, or to check, follow certain procedures. And when we know we have people involved to do this, it, you know, with their, all of the tasks that they're doing in their regular jobs, this can be very challenging to maintain and, of course, can create chances of error and chances of really, you know, safety checks not occurring when they should and really putting people at risk. So, um, you know, manual follow-up and assessment Again, that documentation, that's another key part of this is having that documentation. It certainly, it can be time consuming and, uh, and very costly as well when we think about the time it takes away from people maybe doing their, their key responsibilities within their roles and you know, the revenue generating uh, tasks that they do within their roles you know, versus uh, something like this. So a lot of uh, challenges with that sort of in-house check-in system. I often will hear about sometimes when conversations I've had with uh, you know, clients over the years where, where uh, you know, the person that's tasked with doing this, one of the first things they'll tell me is they say, I don't even know, you know, uh, who's working alone when. And uh, that's something, you know, that they might have some sort of procedure in place and forms to be filled in, but they, you know, they don't even know who's, who's, who they're supposed to be checking in on at a certain time. So, you know, that's, that's where those in-house systems can be very challenging and again, very costly. And you know, just to kind of give you an idea of cost, this is a, a bit of an example of what we just wanted to run through uh, with you. And it's really just where two people, that person out in the field and that person in, in house that's supposed to be checking on that person, uh, an example of where they need to be checked on say every two hours in an eight hour shift. So only four safety checks in a day. And the office employee, you know, has to answer each call and record the time of the call of where the loan worker is and where they'll be the next time that they're the next time that they're going to be calling in. It's very important that, of course, we record where the location on that person is and maybe where they're headed. That's a critical part of this because if you know if they ever are not responding, we need to know where they are. So that that takes time. And we're just in this example using uh, where maybe for it's five minutes per call for those two people, that's their time. And let's just assume a wage for these two employees is say $20 an hour. So as we move on here, we just take that four calls per day, 
at five minutes per call times two employees. And let's just assume this is there's 20 working days in a month. When we look at this, we start to add up that time. That's 800 minutes or you know, over 13 hours at $20 an hour. It's 200 and about $267 uh, a month to check on that one employee that's working along alone. And that's one employee and that's really only checking on them four times a day. And we know if, uh, if a person is you know, in a higher risk situation, we could be checking on them far more often than that. Uh, you know, where uh, maybe you're checking on them every half an hour, every 15 minutes in a very high risk situation. So, and that just adds to, you know, the, the challenge of doing that in a, in a real consistent, reliable way. And of course adds to the cost. So, um, yeah, and it, you know the, the challenge is again remember having people to remember uh, when to check in on that person. You know what happens if the person that's tasked with checking in is is away that day or sick. Or, you know that those are challenges as well. And of course, having that audit trail, um, you know that takes time to meet those regulatory requirements. So just a bit of an example, and you know. One of the things too, this is for one employee. If we start looking at, you know, multiple, you know, many uh, organizations might have, you know, many employees that are working alone or working in isolation at different times. And it's a lot to keep track of. So putting in different types of system, more of a professional system can be a better way to solve this challenge. So that kind of leads into sort of key features of, you know, what we consider would be professional safety check solution for this. So. Um, Number one is, you know, kind of highlight that automated safety checks or safety monitoring with reliable safety check, you know, scheduling, you know, server based. So, you know, having that consistency and that's where we can use technology to really do this in a much better way at whatever frequency is required. Um, you know, technology and that's how, that way it never it never stops working. It'll always uh, very, you know, be there and uh, and allows that that uh, person to you know, adjust that frequency. If they know they're uh, in a higher risk situation, they can quickly change that, that safety check frequency and those safety checks will always occur. The second part we think is, you know, that having, you know, live uh, operator involvement or live involvement, you know, uh, during critical events, like where someone has maybe created, not responded to a safety check, or if they've created an emergency alarm, it's not absolutely necessary to have live operator involvement, but we uh, we think that is uh, an important part uh, that could be included in, in, a, in a comprehensive system as well. So um, having, you know, uh, an app now, an easy, you know, to use a smartphone app with an emergency button, having, um, you know, different methods of interfacing with the system. So whether it's through the, uh, the phone, through a texting option, through a web portal option as well, uh, auto attendant, having various ways of interfacing with the system uh, makes it uh, very helpful. Um, various, uh, we talked about safety check frequency based on risks, having GPS tracking and GPS uh, for those location and, and other ways to provide location tracking information as well, whether it's through written text or voice recordings, all of that really helps when it comes to, you know, that key part of someone's ever not responding, we need to know where that person is. So having as much information on that person's location at the time uh, can be very helpful, can be very helpful for you know, journey management as well. So, and then, uh, you know, having that audit trail where, you know, all activities by that user, you know, uh, turning on the system, turning off the system, all of the safety checks, any uh, alarms, having that complete audit trail for proof of due diligence, very important having an administrator dashboard um, where you could you know, have the map mapping features, those sorts of things. Um, and then different methods of sort of reminding people to, to use the system as well. So things like a text reminder. So those are all kind of key uh, requirements that we feel uh, we have a, uh, that's something that I think I will share with uh, Megan uh, as well, sort of uh, a checklist for you that in terms of any type of operational system that you might be looking at uh, some key requirements that might you want to consider when, when looking at a system to implement. Uh, this next slide here, I just have a short video I want to play for you on what we would kind of uh, consider sort of as a professional system example here. So hopefully this plays okay here for you guys. Welcome to Checkmate Working Alone. 
Our Safe Alone app is designed for use across many industries, by government employees, workers in isolated or remote locations and even people working from home. Lone worker safety monitoring is essential. Employers are responsible for an employee's safety, while on the job, no no matter where their work duties might take them. Knowing where an employee is, when they fail to respond to safety checks or an emergency occurs, is key to providing a timely response. The Safe Alone app makes safety checks easy, and our live operators in our emergency monitoring center are ready to respond 24-7. The Checkmate Safe Alone app works on all smartphone devices and integrates check-ins with an intuitive interface. GPS location details are collected at each check-in, and within minutes of each safety check. If a lone worker does not check in, our emergency monitoring center operators will be able to provide you with the lone worker's location. Well, hopefully that video uh, played. So I guess I can't, I accidentally clicked on another slide here. So it, uh, that's why it had interrupted for a moment. So uh, but hopefully that played okay for everybody. But that again was just sort of a, uh, you know, it's our checkmate system there, a brief uh, video of overview of a little bit about our system. Um, you know, certainly just, this is just a slide to uh, kind of talk about, you know, sort of the, our support, you know, we are, uh, you know, uh, our system is, you know, uh, widely used across, you know, many industries in, in uh, you know, certainly across Canada and parts of the U.S. as well, um, you know, really protecting thousands of, uh, of employees that are uh, working alone. And this is just some stats of the number of safety checks we did last year there, you know, uh, over 3 million in 2022. So, um, a very uh, trusted and, and widely used system to address this challenge. Um, you know, on our website at uh, www.protelliccheckmate.com, we have really two uh, websites, our Protelic uh, uh, Alarms uh, website, which is our security division, and then we have our Protelic Checkmate uh, site, which is all regarding the working alone uh, solution. Uh, under our resource tabs, we have some uh, you know, great information there on some of the legislation requirements, some various tutorials and, and videos that are, that are there as well, different uh, blog articles uh, that might you might find very uh, interesting to to review. And then I, I mentioned that loan worker uh, monitoring that that key that checklist there. That's actually the one it's on our website as well, but I will I, that will be shared with you uh, directly as well. Uh, as Megan sends out the uh, the presentation afterwards. So. Please feel free to uh, review our website. So just some uh, final uh, reviews here uh, and, and key takeaways. You know, working alone is a common hazard uh, that must be controlled as per the regulations as, you know, it's the law. So we, uh, we need to ensure we are doing this. Um, you know, in addition to assessing risks, and developing clear policies and procedures. A critical component is again to have that system of regular contact in place. And how, you know, that's the challenge is how best do we do this? You know, implementing technology will ensure consistency and reliability and will ensure your own company and most importantly, your employees are protected. And we've kind of reviewed there where implementing technology can be a cost effective. A method of managing this hazard and allowing uh, employees to focus on the key requirements of their of their roles. Certainly, uh, you know, across we've observed that you know across uh, Canada, there's you know strong uh, legislation and enforcement. Uh, really, every province in Canada has specific working alone uh, regulations in place, except for. Surprisingly enough, our largest uh, province in Ontario does not have specific regulations on this. Um, but, uh, you know, there's still, we're starting to recognize there's, you know, a lot of employers that still seem to sort of be unaware of the, uh, of this requirement and uh, maybe are at times compromising safety for, you know, sort of in-house solutions, thinking that it's, there's, that everything's being addressed and there's not gaps in there. But really, I think we're putting, uh, staff at risk. So let's ensure that whatever operational system you're putting in place, that it is comprehensive, uh, just like it, all of your other uh, areas of your safety management systems, that they have those clear policies and procedures and they are comprehensive and in fact are, are you know, designed and doing what they're, they're supposed to be doing. So one thing about this is we're, you know, certainly seeing there's increased awareness on this issue and, uh, you know, how best to manage and you know, certainly through 
um, you know, the industry-based safety associations and CSAM, their expertise that they provide and through educational sessions like this. So we're really uh, you know, pleased to have uh, been in here to today to uh, review this and, and talk about this important uh, safety topic here. So I'll just end with, uh, you know, some very simple solutions here, uh, you know, available to you. Um, actually, our checkmate system, of course, designed and uh, right here in Manitoba. So a Manitoba-based solution. And that kind of ends my uh, presentation, please. I've shared my contact information here again. So uh, please feel free to reach out afterwards if you have any questions. Uh, happy to answer or have a further discussion with you. Um, there's a QR code if you want to scan that'll take you to a little bit about our solution. And uh, yeah, I'm just opening the uh, the floor here to uh, any questions that anyone might have or discussion discussion time. Megan, I have was trying to monitor the chat there at one point through the video, and that's actually what uh, I don't know if any questions that come up through uh, the chat. Yeah, um, I think. Going back earlier, it looks like um, Maggie had a question. Um, so she writes, have been using scheduled check-ins with thumbs up text exchanged, if not on schedule, a thumbs up text followed by a phone call with no response. Not sure if this is adequate. Do you have a response to that sort of a system that is built internally? Uh, if not, thumbs up if text exchange, text followed by phone call, if no response. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, again, I think that's great that any kind of system that is in place is better than nothing at all. That's for sure. So whatever you're doing to check in on people and and if it's working in some capacity, I think that's that's great. If it, you know, there's always that, that question when you got people doing this and remembering to do this and remembering to check in and send texts and stuff like that, that's really uh, becomes the challenge. And then also the follow-up, um, you know, have ensuring, you know, I uh, sometimes, you know, having people receive a text, maybe, you know, at times people might be working alone at, at off hours and, and uh, you know, having someone um, respond maybe late at night or something like that, that's where things can get missed and stuff like that, which ultimately could put people at risk. So, you know, that's where having a, you know a system where you have 24/7 monitoring occurring you know that's uh, I think that's important but you know um, any system is better than nothing so uh, that's that's uh, uh, you know something too if you uh, ever want to reach out for you know further discussions I think that was Maggie that maybe mentioned that so yes, yes please feel free It'd be great to have a further conversation with you and just uh, see if we can assist in any any other way so. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, any, I think any most other... of the other comments were, were literally comments, not questions, or some others had just identified that they have used Checkmate uh, previously or just um, thought that this was a great idea. So that's great feedback. If there are others that um, have questions right now, feel free to um, jot them down in the chat. Um, while you're thinking of that, I'm going to advance, um, I think, yeah. Randy, after this slide that you have a, a few other slides attached to there. Yeah, I, I do. And yeah, so I'll just, yeah, it, again, just maybe I'll just end again thanking, you know, CSAM for the opportunity to, you know, join in this important week, you know, Safety and Health Week across Canada and, and discuss this topic, this important topic that we think, you know, certainly, as I mentioned earlier, if if every you know all you folks want to go back and kind of look into in your own organizations, I think it's important to kind of look at what you guys are doing and and uh, make sure that this uh, this is you know people are being you know are safe, being protected, uh, in, you know in a good a comprehensive way in that. So again, thank you uh, everybody. Uh, yes, we'll move on here and thank you again to uh, thank you Megan, thank you CSAM. So. I'll uh, advance the slide here for you. If uh... All right, actually, I, I just pulled it up on another slide here. That's all good, Randy. Okay. Um, so thank you very much, Randy, and thank you all for, for attending this afternoon. Um, it is beautiful outside, and before you log off, um, I just wanted to highlight a few things that are coming uh, your way. Uh, so I will be sending out 
the PowerPoint uh, along with a link to the recorded presentation this afternoon. Um, so that'll come hopefully tomorrow sometime. I also wanted to highlight that we do have some training events coming up. Uh, end of month, we are in Thompson in the PAW. So if you have any workers or jobs up there that you need training for, uh, please check this out. There's a link here on your screen uh, that will take you to our website uh, for further information and registration for our training that's going to be in Thompson and the PAW at the end of May. Uh, also, if you're looking for resources, our website is full of resources, including some virtual toolbox talks. So check that out if you're looking for information or topics or just something to share with your workers. Also, if you are in the Westman, Brandon region, we do have a training event coming up on June 22nd. So uh, please uh, keep that in mind if you have staff out there or if you have workers, uh, jobs that you're doing out there, check that out. Uh, there is a QR code on the screen here or just go to our website for further information. Our app is full of great information, including uh, not only the act and the regulation, which is at your fingertips if you have the app downloaded on your device, but it also has over 30 topics from the act and regulation that have been summarized in more plain language that helps you uh, um, understand what the regulation in the act um, is actually saying. So if you don't have that already, please download that um, so that you can have access to that information at all times. We also have on our website the safety scene, which is a safety scene is a calendar of events of safety of um, information, safety initiatives that are happening within the province. So a great way to keep up to date with what's going on around Manitoba when it comes to safety is uh, the safety scene. So check that out on a regular basis as we update that regularly. Keep uh, interacting with us. Email is obviously a great way to connect with us. Our website is great, um, but we also have a number of platforms for social media that you can access uh, along with our CSAM app that you can download on Google Play or Apple, the App Store. And last but not least, we do uh, want to get your feedback on today's session. So on this screen here, you'll see a QR code. Please scan that QR code uh, and that will take you to a survey that we would love to hear back from you on Randy's presentation um, and give us feedback. Maybe also include some other topics that you're interested in hearing more about. We'll uh, be happy to hear that because this isn't going to be the last of the webinars. We will plan more in, in the near future as well. Uh, Tricia, I see that you have requested the QR code for the Thompson trainings. Let me advance this in a minute or two. I'll let everyone get access to that QR code here for the survey for one more moment or two. If you haven't already provided that feedback, thank you very much. And let's move on to here with the northern one. So at the bottom left hand of that screen, you'll see the QR code for the Northern training. So we have a variety of our courses, oops, sorry about that, um, will be offered in person in Thompson and the PAW. So you can scan that. And Trisha, if you do have any questions, I'm happy to answer those for you at any, any time. Thank you all. I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate your attendance. Many of you have been on uh, our webinars all week long. And thank you for your participation and uh, look to look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you again, Randy. Take care and enjoy the rest of your sunny day. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye for now.